Good morning. Um, welcome to the Board of Liquor License Commissioners for Baltimore City's uh, virtual hearing. Today is June 10th, 2021, and my name is Nicholas Blendy. I am the Deputy Executive Secretary for the agency. Um, as you are all no doubt aware, we are operating on the virtual hearing WebEx platform that many other agencies, such as the Board of Estimates, the Baltimore City Council, and the Planning Department have been using since the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, it's, as we all evolve in our virtual hearing world, um, it seems that we mostly make it through, but each week brings new challenges. So we suggest that everyone try and give themselves as much time as possible and preload everything and get yourself to a place where uh, it is quiet with a strong internet connection so that we can hold a seamless, as seamlessly as possible virtual hearing. All materials, evidence, and related items for today's docket um, are available on the Board of Liquor License Commissioner's website under the hyperlink for today, June 10th, 2021. During the virtual hearing world, the board observes a 48 hour rule for online hearings. Obviously folks aren't in public and cannot present um, papers physically to the, the board. So all evidence had to have been submitted to the board no later than 11 a.m. on Tuesday, June 8th for consideration for this hearing. And uh, our Assistant Executive Secretary, Ms. Stacey Russell, is the person who is the keeper of the evidence. So additionally, if there are any amendments to any applications, um, they are not accepted after May 27th for any hearing today and an automatic postponement will occur if anyone tries to offer one today. How today will operate. I will be reading the preliminary instructions and the general ground rules. I will call all the cases in order as listed on the short docket. I will um, then ask for the applicant and or his or her representative to identify themselves and have any witnesses uh, if need be sworn in by our court reporter. The board will then provide an opportunity for the applicant and his or her representative to present their case. The board may ask questions or of the attorney or the applicant. At the conclusion of the case, the chair will ask any individuals who are on the call and who have the necessary technological uh, capabilities to be heard if they would like to testify in support or opposition to the application. So at, when that point comes, I will ask you to uh, use the raise your hand feature in the um, WebEx platform. And should you do that, I will then identify you, move you into the panel. You will be sworn because all testimony is taken under penalty of perjury. Um, and then at, once that is uh, concluded, you will be able to testify before the board. And we remind you that the board is not authorized to discuss any non-case related matters today. It's sitting in its quasi-judicial capacity and is only authorized to hear evidence and testimony related to today's cases that are before it. General ground rules, um, we ask that you please mute yourself when you're not speaking to minimize feedback and noise. We ask that you identify yourself and, and state the spelling of your name before you speak if requested by the, uh, the court reporter. We ask that you speak slowly and use a clear voice so that the reporter understands exactly what is being said and who is saying it. We note that this is as uh, being recorded by the court reporter also running live on Charm TV. Um, any individual who uses profanity, is disrespectful or unruly may be expelled from today's hearing. All attendees who wish to provide testimony, as noted before, must be sworn in before they can uh, be heard by the board. No physical evidence will be taken today. And again, no, no amendments to any applications. Um, we, we hope that everyone is prepared. And as I mentioned before, a good, quiet location with strong internet. We ask that you pay attention and be present so that um, when your case gets called that you're ready to go. And above all, please be patient with yourself and uh, with all the other attendees and the board as we use this technological tool, which unfortunately sometimes has some, some uh, challenges that we need to work through. With that said, the short docket for today's hearing is up on the screen. As a preliminary matter, I will note that um, the very first item has been postponed and will be heard at the next hearing, which is June 24th, 2021. Mr. Chairman, are you and the board prepared to move through the docket? Yes, let's begin. All right. 
the first case is Jin Suk Cho and Renu Kaben Patel Shri Misai LLC trading as urban sellers and spirits, 222 North Charles Street, Unit B2. The, the uh, This is an application to transfer ownership of a Class A beer, wine, and liquor license and to add delivery of alcoholic beverages. This is Mr. Previs, who I am making a panelist, and my understanding is all the applicants are with him. Mr. Previs, can you turn your camera on? Okay. There we go. Chair members of the board, Peter Previs, on behalf of the applicants, Reneko Ben, Patel, and Ms. Jin Suk Chung. Both of them are with me, and I'm going to turn my camera here for a second. Okay. Um, previously, you need them to testify. Or you I, I, I would uh, request to proceed by way of proffer. Okay. Would you proceed. like to have them sworn first? or? But not, if they're not going to testify, we don't need it. Okay, great. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, this is a, a an application for transfer of uh, ownership and not location of the current urban seller um, location at uh, 222 North Charles Street, uh, Unit B2. I'm sorry, urban sellers and spirits. Um, the liquor store is in the, um, the apartment complex, which is a caddy corner from my office. Uh, the liquor store has been there for a few years now um, and serves the apartments that are in the immediate vicinity of our neighborhood here. Um, Ms. Patel is a 50% owner. There's a family friend, Ms. Nikki Parikh, who would be the other 50% owner. Ms. Patel has years of experience in the liquor store business. She currently works at Daily Grind over at Hopkins, but um, back in the 90s and 2000s, um, worked in a liquor store in Delaware. She is alcohol awareness certified. She also um, has all the experience necessary to make sure that she abides by the board's rules and regulations. The premises is, uh, will be operated under the same trade name and the same hours and days, which is six days a week under this class A from 10 to 10. I can tell you from the inventory that's been taken that there is a substantial amount of wine uh, servicing the, the the apartment residents that are close by and um, I've also been to the store uh, it being a neighbor of, of our uh, law firm's office the purchase price is 250,000 all be, to be paid cash at settlement uh, and Ms. Patel will be the um, the operator full-time overseer of the of the establishment Ms. Jinsuk Cho is the I'm sorry. Uh, how many employees do I have? Two. And, and she'll be supervising them? They'll be certified? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. And, and Ms. Ms. Cho is the current licensee, and she's agreed to remain on as a Baltimore City resident. And she's here to my far left. And uh, and if, if there's any questions of the board of either of the licensees, they're available. Okay. Uh, commissioners have any questions? I have none. Only only question I have, <clears throat> Mr. Previs, is uh, Ms. Patel's husband is a licensee at another establishment. Were there any issues there? Uh, no, sir. Uh, he, he is uh, a licensee of the, um, let me make sure I have the name right, Boz's Burger Bistro up by Hopkins University. Um, he's on a class B license. He has no involvement of this. She, she is independently going to be the owner operator of this establishment. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Previous. Um, their, their daily grinds are, are, are not liquor licensed. Okay. Um, Mr. Blundy, do we have anybody else who wishes to testify on this matter? If any member of the public wishes to be heard on this matter, please use the raise your hand feature in the WebEx platform. Mr. Chairman, I do not see any member of the public who wishes to testify. Okay, thank you. Uh, if there's nothing further than Mr. Previs, uh, on the basis of the materials contained in the application, uh, 
I note that uh, the uh, current licensee has no violations at this location. It seems to be a good, clean operation. Um, and on the basis of your proffer to us about the experience of Ms. Patel and her intentions with respect to this uh, operation, I would vote to approve the application to transfer ownership of this Class A wine and liquor license with delivery of alcoholic beverages. Commissioners? Commissioner Guy, uh, based upon the proffer of Mr. Previs and, Previs and the uh, informa information in their packet, I would also um, move to approve the transfer of ownership and the delivery of alcoholic beverages. Based upon the application and the profit from Mr. Priebus, I too would approve the application to transfer ownership with the delivery of alcoholic beverages. Thank you, Ms. Russell. No, it's it is for the record. Okay, thank you. Good luck. Thank you, sir. That uh, concludes this matter before the board. Uh, applicant will receive follow-up instructions from this agency on how to proceed in obtaining your uh, license. Mr. Chairman, are you ready for the next matter? Yes. The next matter before the board today, applicant Ronald Prichorin and Richard Susi, 1700 East Fort Avenue, LLC, trading as City Limits Sport Bar, uh, physical location 1700 to 04 East Fort Avenue. And this is a request to add outdoor table service only for an existing BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license. Um, this is the other Mr. Previs uh, representing um, this applicant and all parties should be there. Is there anyone, Mr. Previs, that I need to move into the thing or is everyone with you? I don't think so. There might be someone from the Locust Point uh, Civic Association. If, uh, but yeah, if, I'm if, not sure. if they raise their hand, we'll, we'll have them uh, heard. But if, okay, if you've got what you. you need, Mr. Chairman, everyone seems okay, ready. Mr. Mr. Previs, to identify yourself for the record, please. Yes, Harry Previs, uh, on behalf of uh, Ronald Procherin and uh, Richard Sousey, and Ronald is with me. Okay, so and are, you gonna, are you gonna proffer this matter? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is a, a, re a request for outdoor table service. Um, basically, the coronavirus pandemic um, Force city limits sports bar their hand um, to open outdoors. And it's been a nice little addition for them and the community. Um, the Locust Point Civic Association, um, came, they had a meeting last night, and I understand that their letter didn't make it into the exhibits, but they have expressed their support. And um, the the outdoor seating is, has been a, a good addition to the community in Locust Point. Um, How much outdoor seating do they have? It's on the Fort Avenue side. It's three, tables. three tables on the Fort Avenue and side. Four on, four on the Andre Street. And four on the Andre uh, Street side. Okay. Uh, and I hope everyone's safe. I I think these are great additions to um, re restaurants and locations. I just worry about some of our drivers in Baltimore. Um, <laughs> I hope that, that they're uh, safely guarded there. But um, that sounds fine. And nothing else is changing with respect to the license? No, nothing else. Just the outdoor dining. Okay. Do the commissioners have any questions? I have none. No questions. Okay, uh, do we have public comment, Mr. Bundy? If any member of the public wishes to be heard on this matter, uh, please use the raise your hand feature in the WebEx platform. Mr. Chairman, I do not see any member of the public who wishes to testify. Okay, thank you. Ms. Previous, then on the basis of the materials contained in the application, your proper, uh, including your proper that the local Locus Point Civic Association is in support of this, um, noting that there are no recent violations on this license, uh, I would vote to approve the addition of outdoor table service to the existing license. Commissioners? Commissioner Guy, based upon the evidence presented, 
and the proffer of uh, Mr. Uh, Previous, I would also uh, vote to add the outdoor table service uh, to this license. Based upon the applications and the proper from Mr. Previous, I too would approve the uh, addition of outdoor table service. Thank you, Ms. Russell. No, is it just for the record? Okay, well, thank you, Mr. Previous. I good luck to them. Thank you, and have a good day. Thank you. Uh, Applicant and or licensee uh, will receive follow up instructions by uh, mail from this agency on how to um, get this addition to their existing license. Mr. Chairman, are you ready for the next matter? I am. The next item before the board today is applicant J. Wu Park and Candace Shanae Winter, JJ Hoffman Incorporated, trading as Hoffman Liquors, 4401 to 03 Park Heights Avenue. This is an application to transfer ownership only of a class A beer, wine and liquor license. Mr. Yu is counsel for the applicants and he has just been moved into the um, panel, sir. Okay, Mr. Yu, are you there? Good morning, Your good morning, Commissioner, uh, Mr. Chairman. J. U. Yes. representing the applicants, Mr. J. Park and Ms. Candace Winter, who are and both you, in my office. Will, they, will you be proceeding by proper? Yes, thank you. Okay, why don't you tell us about their application? Yes, this is a uh, request for transfer of ownership. Um, Mr. Park, who will be the president and the secretary and the treasurer and the 100% owner, and Ms. Candace Winter will be the Rest and agent licensee. Uh, Ms. Winter is a Baltimore City resident, a lifelong Baltimore City resident. Uh, she has a uh, no criminal conviction, uh, no serious traffic violations. Uh, she owns a, a cleaning business in, ba in, in Baltimore City and the surrounding counties. Uh, and um, she will make she lives only 15 minutes away from the location and she knows the location and she'll be frequenting the location to make sure that all the rules and regulations are abided by. Um, she's a person of good moral character and um, she's familiar with, with the rules and regulations. Mr. Park, um, he has two years of experience in DC operating a beer wine grocery uh, convenience store. So he's also familiar with the rules and regulations uh, and he ha is alcoholic, alcohol awareness certified uh, he has no serious traffic or criminal violation, a person of good moral character. And um, he will be the owner operator and he will make sure that that uh, all the employees that he'll be uh, hiring will be also certified. And um, he will create a, a internal policy to make sure that all the rules are followed, especially with the sale to minors. And um, he will make sure that no one under 45 years of age will be served without being checked for ID. Uh, he's familiar, he's, he's aware of the fact that this location had uh, you know, numerous violations and uh, he, so therefore he's, he's gonna make, take extra, extra care to make sure that no violation occurs under his watch. Okay. Uh, and is there any community association that, that, that supports or opposes? Uh, to our knowledge, there's no community association that's opposing. Um, the previous, the, the seller, uh, Mr. So, has been there for 30 years, and Mr. So uh, will be taking Mr. Park around the neighborhood and the community to uh, uh, introduce Mr. Park to the community, and Mr. Park uh, will be uh, engaging the community actively to make sure that the needs of the community are met. Okay, thank you. Uh, commissioners, have any questions? I have none. Just Mr. Yu, uh, any issues with Mr. Park and his license in DC? No, he had, he had no violence. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Blundy, do we have anyone else who wishes to testify? If any member of the public wishes to be heard on this matter, please use the raise your hand feature in the WebEx platform. Mr. Chairman, I do not see any member of the public who wishes to testify. Thank you. So, Mr. Yu, on the basis then of the materials contained in the application 
and your extensive proper with respect to this transfer. Um, I would vote to approve the transfer of ownership of this Class A license. Commissioners? Commissioner Guy, based on the evidence presented and the proper of Mr. Yu, I also uh, would vote to transfer the uh, ownership of this establishment. Based upon the application and the proffer from Mr. Yu, I too would approve the application to transfer ownership. Thank you. Mr. Ms. Russell? No, as if it's for the record. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Yu. Good luck to your client. Thank you. Thank you. Applicant will receive a uh, follow up from this agency via US mail um, on next steps in order to obtain the license. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think the next one we're having some technical difficulties, but um, if you're ready, I can move on to that. All right. Mr. Maslin, Hello. can you hear me? Yeah, 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 I hear yeah. you. All right, let me see. So for whatever reason, I cannot make you a panelist, but anyway. Um, uh, I, think it, I think it's coming on. Um, yeah, yeah so, so Mr. Chairman, um, Mr. Maslin is counsel for this case. He is in both phone and on his computer, but for whatever reason, WebEx will not allow me to make him a panelist. So he would not be able to be on screen um so oh, if you'd I like to move forward you have to waive the can, rule uh I can that's see fine you guys. okay uh, well so mr maslin we're gonna go ahead and per the chair uh wave wave the rule of video since you are trying and it appears to be an issue with technology and not you um possibly on the webex end so i will call your case and then the chairman will uh, yeah. move forward accordingly so thank you the, the, the next item before um the board today applicant dennis lee gray robin and shan llc uh, that's oh, i'm sorry i went too far that's my apologies the next item before the board mittal patel and david michael green blue crab express incorporated trading as blue crab express 1020 West Patapsco Avenue 21230. This is an application to transfer ownership only with continuation of outdoor table service of a Class D beer, wine, and liquor license and a request to add delivery of alcoholic beverages. Mr. Ma Maslin is uh, there, Your Honor. Okay, Mr. Maslin, can uh, you hear me? Would yeah, you identify I hear you fine, Judge. Would you identify uh, for yourself? Record, Gary Maslin. For the record, Gary Maslin, I apologize for my voice. I had third surgery two months ago. It's never got quite back. Um, my clients are here, the uh, Patels and, and the Greens. If I could be permitted to proffer, Your Honor. You may. Go ahead. All right. Thank you. This is an application to transfer an existing business that's been there since 2006. It's in a commercial area along Patapsco Avenue. There's not really a community. That, that surrounds it at all. It's a um, uh, it, it's a highly uh, commercial uh, sh stretch of, of land there. Uh, it is a uh, primarily a uh, a crab business uh, that exists there. There are four outdoor picnic tables where people enjoy eating crabs. Um, my client, the existing tenant, enjoys a very good relationship with the community. He's going to introduce. Um, the uh, new owners to the community. Uh, he participates and they're going to continue to participate in fundraising efforts to assist the community in their in their efforts to improve the the area. The applicant is, is, has had experience eight months in the in a package with business in uh, St. Mary's County is familiar with the rules and regulations for the sale of alcoholic beverages. Uh, she will be getting additionally TAM certified as well as the other applicant who is the qualifying city um, city resident. The hours of operation will be from 9 o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock at night. Um, uh, she's paying $600,000 uh, for, for the business. Um, 
and uh, I believe she's a fit and proper person uh, to have this license. Um, she's looking forward to taking over this uh, uh, the, the business. And she she's not living in Baltimore at the present time, is that right? No, she's she's going to move to the area from um, St. Mary's County. Okay, uh, but someone's going to be on on site and managing this on a regular basis. She's going to be there. The turn ten after the uh, the license is transferred, she's moving up here, as well as Mr. Green will be there helping out. He's a Baltimore City resident. Okay, and how That's many employees? Is, uh, there are. How many? Um, There'll be three employees there. All right, and they'll all be TAM certified? Yes, anyone dealing with alcoholic beverages will be uh, TAM certified. They're employees that deal primarily with stock and uh, cooking crabs and things of that nature that don't, don't, don't serve the public at all. Okay. Okay, uh, commissioners have any questions? I have none. No questions. Um, do we have public testimony, Mr. Blundy? If any member of the public wishes to be heard on this matter, please use the raise your hand feature in the WebEx platform. Mr. Chairman, I do not see any member of the public who wishes to testify. Thank you. Uh, all right, Mr. Maslin, on the basis then of the uh, materials contained in the application and your proper with respect to the uh, new licensees. Um, I would vote to approve the application to transfer ownership of the license with continued outdoor table service and delivery of alcoholic beverages. Commissioner? Commissioner Guy, uh, based upon the evidence presented and the proof of Mr. Maslin, I too would also vote to transfer the ownership with continuation of outdoor table service and the delivery of alcoholic beverages. Based upon the proffer from Mr. Maslin, the application I too would approve the transfer of ownership with continuation of outdoor table service and the delivery of alcoholic beverages. Thank you, Ms. Russell. No exhibits for the record. Okay, thank you, Mr. Maslin. I hope you get your check and your voice back uh, and good luck to your client. I hope so too, Judge, but I'm not optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> that concludes this. Much, that concludes this matter before the board. Uh, applicant will receive follow-up instructions from this agency on how to proceed in obtaining their license via uh, mail. Mr. Chair, are you ready for the next matter? I am. Thank you, sir. The next item before the board today. Applicant Dennis Lee Gray, Robin and Shan LLC, trading as Harbor Tandor, 803 South Caroline Street, 21231. This is an application to transfer ownership with continuation of outdoor table service of a Class B beer, wine, and liquor license. Applicant is further requesting off-premises catering and the delivery of alcoholic beverages. Um, there are several people, so if the chair will bear with me while I add them to the panels. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, that should be everyone. So, good afternoon. Uh, would you hear me, Commissioner? Yes. Yes. So, okay. Mr. Fapa, if you could turn your camera on, please. So we, uh, I don't know what, what happened here. Okay, there should be a yeah. start start video yeah. button somewhere. Yes. Yes, we did. All right. Uh, yes. Uh, can you turn on that? There you go. Would you share, uh, would you share us? He, here is a Dennis Gray. Would you read your hand? Hello. Hello. And this is a Dina Bino Upreti, the owner of current restaurant called Namaste Baltimore. And here is my partner and chef, Ram Tapa. Uh, I'm Ram Tapa. And my sister, cousin sister, Mandira Mainali, probably joining from Virginia. Three okay. of us, partners, Mr. Gray is our resident agent. Mr. You're pretty. Let me take over from here, okay? Thank you. This is yes. this is a reporter. Uh, would you be able to spell the names of the people with you, um, Mr. Sapa? Okay. Let, let me 
uh, break in here if I might. Good morning, Your Honor. How are you? David, Mr. and Mr. Winter and Bartlett representing the applicants. Madam Good Reporter, morning. Mr. Thap, Thap, Thapa's name is spelled T-H-A-P-A. Ms. Caraprudy's last name is spelled U-P-R-E-T-Y. Mr. Yep. Gray's name is spelled G-R-A-Y. We also have with us Henry DeFord of McKenzie Commercial, who's the leasing broker, and we solicit some short testimony from him, and it's D-E-F-O-R-D. Uh, so who's going to be testifying, Mr. Mister? Just Mr. I, DeFord? I, yeah, it's just Mr. DeFord, and then I would seek to proffer for the applicant and the owners of the restaurant with the board's permission. Okay. Is Mr. DeFord, is, have you brought him into the panel, Mr. Blundy? Yes, he should be. Okay, let's let's try to square him in. Yeah, I see him. Ms. Baranowski, do you see Mr. DeFord? Oh, yes. Uh, Mr. DeFord, can you raise your right hand? Thank you. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you guide or under penalty of perjury? I do. Thank you. With the board's okay. permission, I'll question Mr. DeFord. Go ahead. Mr. DeFord, uh, what is your position with McKenzie Commercial? Uh, I'm a vice president of McKenzie Commercial Real Estate Services. Um, I'm a commercial real estate broker that is uh handling the um leasing for the landlord of this property at 803 south carolina street okay and you've been tasked with with the leasing and also assisting in this application process will you please i mean the board can obviously take notice of its own records but will you just give the board a brief history of of the restaurants at this 803 south carolina street i believe there was one there actually before the last licensee lo de v uh, is that correct? So, yeah, just a very, very brief history. So the, the property was built as the Inn at Black Olive in 2013, um, and which was a hotel with restaurant on the bottom floor. Um, my client uh, purchased the property uh, subsequently and uh, leased the ground floor restaurant space to a French brasserie. Uh, the French brasserie uh, vacated the property in March of 2020. Um, shortly after the pandemic, um, and uh, now uh, India, oh, excuse me, Harbor Tandoor, the applicant here, um, is applying to uh, backfill that 2,500 square foot uh, turnkey restaurant space. And that okay. uh, low de V was basically a victim of, of the COVID uh, pandemic. Is that correct? Cor co correct. Okay. And that's the reason that the, the, the landlord hasn't been able to find an operator until things subsided and, and obviously businesses were able to reopen uh, based upon the governor's order and the mayor's order. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Um, does the does the board have any questions? Uh, well, let me just ask you this. Mr. DeFord, do you believe if the board approves this application, it will be of benefit to and it be an accommodation to the to the dining public? A absolutely. I think I think there's a, a void in the market of any Indian food um and uh or, or nepalese food and uh i think this would be a a, a big win for the fells point and harbor point communities thank you mr uh, ford mr mr who's going to run the operation and uh who, what, what's the experience uh this is me okay let's, let's let, me, let me talk about that uh and then we can with something that may be um i proper uh, mr chairman that um first off a very, very experienced operator who's currently already an owner of the two restaurants in Baltimore City. That's Mr. Uh, uh, Upridi, who owns Namaste, which is in Naples uh, cuisine restaurant in uh, on Cold Spring Lane, as well as Alonzo's, which I'm sure the board's familiar with. He owns those two sister restaurants on Cold Spring Lane, and they continue to be very successful. And I think he's been a very good uh, corporate citizen and licensee there, despite its nearness to several well-known universities, including uh, obviously Loyola and Notre Dame College. Um, Mr. Uh, Upridi has very uh, extensive experience, and he's not only a restaurateur, a long-time restaurateur in Baltimore City, but he also uh, has, uh, along with his, um, his cousin, 
Miss Manali, a restaurant now in Baltimore County known as the Crackpot Restaurant, which is a seafood restaurant been around for many, many years, and it's been successful there without violations. Mr. Upriti is going to be very actively involved in this as he spends the vast majority of his time at, with his Baltimore City restaurants. Mr. Gray is not a restaurateur, but he was a career bank auditor, is now retired, and is available to perform whatever tasks might be, uh, he might be tasked with, uh, but basically to visit the restaurant, make sure that they are providing good customer service. Oh, that's and cutting course, out. Was that me? Cutting out? Sorry, that, sorry. Yes, yeah, your audio is cutting out. Can you hear me? Yes, I heard the last words. Sorry about that. Um, this is not working. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chair, I, I see the, the dreaded triangle of low bandwidth. Uh, oh, there I see Mr. Mister again. Let's try it again. I hope Mr. Gray is not going to be an active manager for his premises. Ram Thapa, who has experience on a daily basis, and he will be managing the business with the course of regular input from Mr. Upridi. Mr. Gray is going to visit. He's going to see they're offering good customer service and obviously with the alcohol beverage code and the rules and regulations. They will have a policy and practice to make sure everyone is of sufficient age to purchase and consume alcohol beverage. They also have a policy and practice to make sure that none of their patrons are served if they are yeah, all breaking up. Yeah, we can't hear you. Um, okay. Mr. Thop is going to run the operation with Mr. Yupriti. Is Mr. Thop a certified? Yes. I don't know. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. And the, pe the people who handle alcohol will all be trained and certified? Yes. Yes. We do. We do, yes. We both have a, a alcohol certification, uh, uh, the food handling certificate. Yes, he does. Yes, I do. Yeah. And then we have to swear in if you're going to testify. Yeah, uh, if if you're going to testify, uh, you, you have to be sworn in first, Mr. Thapa. Yes, I do. Uh, so I don't know that I need any further testimony from them. Uh, I just wanted to uh, make sure, and I, I couldn't communicate with Mr. Mister. Do the commissioners have any questions? Do you have any questions? No, no, I don't have. And, uh, Commissioner, did the commissioners have any questions? All I want to mention, you know, the sales um, point you, you also testify. No, sir. Testify. Sir, uh, you, you can't testify unless you've been sworn. So I, I merely want to. Pretty 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 pretty. Pretty. Have we lost Everybody the commissioner? I, I have uh, no questions. I have no questions. Do you, Mr. Can you hear me? I have no questions. We can't hear you, Mr. Mister. Um, okay. Do we have public comment, Mr. Blendy? If any member of the public wishes to be heard on this matter, please use the raise your hand feature in the WebEx platform. Mr. Chair, I do not see any member of the public who wishes to testify. Okay, let me just note for the record, I don't see any violations at this location in the past. Uh, it looks like there's a clean record. Uh, on the basis of the materials contained in the application, uh, the testimony of Mr. DeFord, uh, the proper by Mr. Mister, and those materials, I would vote to approve the application to transfer this Class B beer, wine, and liquor license with continuation of outdoor table service, off-premise catering, and delivery of alcoholic beverages. Commissioners? Commissioner Guy. Uh, based, based upon the uh, testimony of Mr. DeFord and, and uh, the proffer of Mr. I'm sorry, um, of Mr. Mister, uh, I would also vote to approve the transfer of ownership with continuation 
of outdoor table service and off-premise catering and delivery of alcoholic beverages. Based upon the application, the proffer from Mr. Mister, the testimony of Mr. DeFord, I too would approve the transfer of ownership with continuation of outdoor table service, off-premise catering, and the delivery of alcohol beverages. Thank you, Ms. Russell. No, is it for the record? Okay, uh, I hope you can hear me, Mr. Mister, but thank you and good luck to your clients. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That concludes this matter before the board. Applicant will receive follow-up instructions on how to proceed with obtaining their license via mail from this agency. Mr. Chair, are you ready for the final matter before the board today? Yes. Go ahead. The last item uh, before the board today, applicant Mark S. Hayes and Ivan Yordanoff, Mimic LLC, trading as Central. 885 to 89 North Howard Street 21201. This is the application to transfer ownership with continuation of outdoor table service of a class B beer, wine, and liquor license. And they are also requesting delivery of alcoholic beverages. Uh, applicant is represented by Mr. Fogelman, who should have everyone with him and is now impaneled. Mr. Fogelman, Mr. Chair. Council, we identify yourself for the record, please. Yes, uh, good morning, Stephen W. Fogelman, on behalf of the applicants. Okay, uh, Ms. Fogelman, you're going to proceed by. What? Can you see and hear me okay? I can't see you, but I can hear you. Oh. Um, uh, well, it's more of a camera angle thing than a, oh, boy. Than a technology thing. Okay. okay. Are you going to proceed Manual by way of Fogelman? There you go, Mr. Fogelman. Yes, thank you very much, Stephen W. Fogelman, on behalf of the applicants here at um, here at uh, 885 to 889 North Howard Street, uh, Mark Hayes and Ivan Yordanoff. Uh, Mr. Yordanoff has a uh, very uh, extensive restaurant management experience, uh, 18 years to be exact, mostly in Washington, DC. Uh, Mr. Mark Hayes to his right uh, has 40 years experience in the business, starting as a dishwasher in 1980. Um, he is known as a former general manager of several um, clubs in the city of Baltimore, including um, Grand Central, uh, among others, at Timothy Dean's uh, Bistro uh, in Fells Point, Canton. Uh, they, in fact, Mr. Um, Hayes has previously been alcohol management certified several times. Uh, he is currently alcohol management certified. Uh, I do want to uh, let the board know uh, we did have the an MOU executed um, this morning, and I will forward that to the board. I just didn't think that we could get you that information in time and writing. We also have a um, letter of endorsement from the Mount Vernon Belvedere Association. And if you'll bear with me, I'm happy to just read that to you. It's quite short. Go ahead. Who is, with whom do they have the memorandum of understanding? MVBA, the Mount Vernon Belvedere Association. Okay. And uh, there's a letter written to uh, the Board of Liquor License Commissioners dated today uh, in reference to this establishment. Dear Commissioners, on behalf of the Mount Vernon Belvedere Association. I'm pleased to offer this letter in support of the application for transfer of ownership of Class B beer, wine, and liquor license, along with continuation of live entertainment for the above referenced applicant. An MOU uh, between our association and the applicant uh, has been completed and should be on file for this license application. We understand the applicant would like to provide off premise delivery of alcoholic beverages, as well as outlined in the MOU, and we support these amenities. We um, Welcome the Mimic LLC owners to the 885-89 North Howard Street location within the Mount Vernon community. Please accept this letter's verification of our support and please feel free to contact us. Signed by Michelle Richter, president of the MDBA. Okay, thank you for that. So uh, I'm a little confused. Is this a request for live entertainment on the license? Um, so the it, it, not at this time, it is not. Okay, okay, all right. All right, um, and the people that, they're both very experienced, so the people that they hire and who handle alcohol will all be certified? Yes, indeed, as they have been in the past. 
Okay. And, and I, I, and I want to make it, sure I understand what's going on. I don't know if this is the place where it lapsed, but I did ask for live entertainment on this application. Um, I Maybe I'll ask Mr. Blendy, does the UNO say live entertainment? Because I, I unfortunately, I'm holding this camera phone and I, I can't dig into my file. Yeah, I can give me a second. Sure, if you can just look for the application, because there are many yep. instances, unfortunately, in the city where the liquor license says live entertainment on it. But when you go to pull permit, they say, well, live entertainment has not been approved. And so, so uh, the application uh, does ask for live entertainment of a DJ and band. Um, right. So that's why so I'm wondering. Is that currently before us then, Mr. Blendy? Um, yes. If, if the board would make official note, that could be before you. Um, I'm looking at okay. uh, actually, and the uh, that is a, um, a Scrivener's on our short docket matter because i'm looking at the notice and then public notice um which note, noted the hearing and presently posted does talk of continuation of live entertainment so it's probably just an omission on the document the i'll read for the board what is on notice to the public which matches the application and why i apologize to the public and the board for the error on the on this docket but it reads scope of application transfer of ownership with continuation of live entertainment requesting delivery of alcoholic beverages so, so it, it appears outside. we we trans transposed outdoor table service for live entertainment mr chairman on this particular posting but the public is on notice and the application properly requests live entertainment and so can you hear me i'm outside I'm outside in front of the sign, and it does. Well, say I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. chair. I said, is, are we not asking? Not asking for outdoor table service. Uh, you said no. That, we are not. No, uh, it, that that is the error, and again, I apologize to everyone. Um, there's not continuation of outdoor table service. It's continuation of live entertainment, which is on the application. Sorry so it's already that. it's already with the use and I'm looking at the permit the UNO now. So I again I apologize for the confusion, but I note for the board and for the public that it is properly listed on the notice in front of the building. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Fogelman, will the live entertainment be the same as it's always been? Yes, it will, Your Honor. Okay, and that's part of the MOU as well, right? Exactly. And, and they're willing that to have work with. They're, they're willing to have the terms of the MOU be uh, part of their license? Yes, they are. Okay. Do the commissioners have any questions? I have none. No questions. Public uh, testimony, Mr. Blendy? If any member of the public wishes to testify on this matter, please use the raise your hand feature in the WebEx platform. Mr. Chairman, I do not see any member of the public who wishes to testify. Thank you. Mr. Fogelman, then on the basis of the materials contained in the application as now correctly stated, and on the basis of your proffer, uh, which includes the uh, approval letter from the Mount Vernon um, Belvedere Association and uh, to be submitted the MOU between the licensee applicants and the Belvedere, uh, Mount Vernon Belvedere Association, uh, I would vote to approve this application to transfer the uh, Class B beer, wine, and liquor license at this location uh, with continued live entertainment and delivery of alcoholic beverages. Commissioners? And I'm I, subject to the terms of the MOU, of course, to the extent they're important. Commissioner Guy, uh, <clears throat> based upon the information presented and the proffer of Mr. Fogelman, I too would also vote to transfer. With, I too would also agree, approve the transfer of ownership with live entertainment and its delivery of alcoholic beverages, and also included with the MOU of the Mount Vernon Belvedere Association. Thank you. Based upon the application and the proffer from Mr. Fogelman. I too would approve the transfer of ownership with continuation of live entertainment, delivery of alcoholic beverages, subject to the terms of the MOU between the licensees and the Mount Vernon Belvedere Association to the extent they're enforceable by law. Thank, thank you. you, Ms. Russell. No, as if it's for the record. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Fogelman. Good luck to your clients. Thank you, thank you all. <laughs> Mr. Blendy, does that complete our docket for today? 
That concludes uh, this matter and license applicant will receive follow up instructions on how to obtain their liquor license from this agency via mail and yes, Mr. Chair that concludes all matters on today's docket. Um, if you're ready, Mr. Chair, I can read the adjournment. You may. The board will be in recess until Thursday, June 24th, 2021. The board shall post on its website, provide notice to applicants and or attorneys and conduct a virtual hearing on the state. Please call our office at 410-396-4377 between 8.30 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. with any questions or concerns that you have concerning this or any other matter. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The board is in recess, if you so order. Uh, thank you. Thank, I want to thank the commissioners and the liquor board um, staff uh, for this hearing and all those who participated. And uh, have a nice day. We'll see you on June 24th. Thank you. See you then. Stay safe. Have a good day.